the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 66, Deuteronomy 22 to 26. Onesimus is a city of refuge. The holy community God wanted was a society that comforted and cared for pains of the foreigner and the poor and for the people to practice justice. First point. A citizen in a kingdom of priests had to help a neighbor's ox when they saw it straying. To the manor generation, Moses told them to respect and look after their neighbor's possessions. He said, if you see your fellow Israelite ox or a sheep straying, do not ignore it, but be sure to take it back to its owner. If they do not live near you, or if you do not know who owns it, take it home with you and keep it until they come looking for it. Then give it back. Do the same if you find their donkey or a clock or anything else they have lost. Do not ignore it. If you see a fellow Israelite's donkey or an ox fallen on the Lord, do not ignore it. Help the owner get it to its feet. We can see that God considered even the small details of how the community was to function after the people entered the land of Canaan. Second point, a slave in a kingdom of priests was someone who was also regarded as precious and worthy. This is the story of Onesimus' city of refugee guided by St. Paul. Through Moses, God told the Israelites about the ordinance of slaves in a kingdom of priests. If a slave has taken refuge with you, do not hand them over to their master. Let them live among you wherever they like and in whatever town they choose. Do not oppress them. God told the people how they were to act when they saw a runaway slave. God told them to set them free. Right on, we see how much this clashed with the Roman Empire's law. That a master was able to kill the slave if they found him or her learning away. We can see just why God emphasized to the people that he was the God that set the people free whilst they were slaves in Egypt. The first article of a constitution in a kingdom of priests was, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Therefore, God ordered the Israelites to free slaves that ran away and set up wise to deter people from forcing others into slavery. Third point, God is the father of orphans and the judge of the widow. God, through Moses, guided on how the Israelites were to live as a holy nation in a kingdom of priests. The first was for them to not abuse their workers. The second was for them to pay their workers on time. The third was not to punish the person's sons or daughters. The fourth was not to loan the orphans or the widows. The fifth was not to take from the widows. The sixth was not to leave the edges of their fields so that the widows and orphans could also eat. God emphasized that the Israelites were not to forget that they were once slaves in Egypt. Thus, they had to take extra care in protecting the weak in society. God also told them not to charge extra on the clothes for the poor as they needed the expenses to live. Fourth point, 
Slicing was to be done 40 times, and in most cases, it had to be under 40 times. In a kingdom of priests, the judge was able to make the order for the sinner to get slashed up to 40 times. It was important for the person being punished not to feel too abused. And it was against the law to slash more than 40 times. It was for this reason that St. Paul was slashed 39 times by the Jews, albeit several times. The Roman Empire's punishment, on the other hand, was much more severe. It was aimed at humiliating and then killing the sinner. The tool that the Roman Empire used for slashing had pieces of steel or bone stuck to it, which caused severe bleeding and scarring. It even made the eyeballs pop out from the pain. Jesus, before taking the cross, was slashed with such tools made by the Roman Empire. Fifth point, if the Israel nation kept the laws of the kingdom of priests, God promised to bless all nations through them. The conclusion for Moses' second lecture was the following. The Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws. Carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared this day that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in obedience to him, that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws, that you will listen to him. And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people, his treasured possession, as he promised, and that you are to keep all his commands. He has declared that he will send you in praise, fame, and honor, high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God as he promised. As such, the core of Moses' second lecture was obeying God's command with all your heart and God's promise to bless them abundantly on the condition that they obeyed. Regarding the relationship the Israel nation was to have with their surrounding countries, God told them to punish the Amalekites. This command was achieved during the days of King David. The Amalekites came to a final close in the days of Esther after the searches from Haman. God also told them to not have bad feelings towards the people of Edom and Egypt. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tongdok Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth to mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.